Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we will be covering Wireshark and file compression. So what and why? So it's no secret, the trace files can get large, literally in the blink of an eye. So a little trivia for you people, if you want to bring it up during your next party. An average blink is between 100 and 150 milliseconds. So if you have a 1 gig network, that blink works out to be 12 to 18 megabytes of data or 125 megabytes within a second. So as you can see, the files grow pretty quick. Protocol analysts often run into challenges when you have to email or store these huge files. So one Wireshark feature I'd like to share is a built-in file compression option. It's built right into Wireshark. You don't have to download anything. It's just right in there. After using this feature for a while, I had someone ask me a great question. Is Wireshark more efficient than manually zipping the trace file. So the concept is you can manually get a zip utility, 7-zip, WinZip, whatever you want, and you can zip them manually, or does Wireshark do a good enough job internally? So in this article, I'm going to compare Wireshark's G-Zip, that's what they use, and a popular zip format, zip and 7-Z format, and that's with 7-Zip. So Wireshark uses that gzip for file compression. If you look it up on Wikipedia, here's the link. It says gzip is a file format and software application used for file compression and decompression. Now in Wireshark, this option is available if you go to File, Save As, or if you go to File, Export Specific Packets, and you'll see it right here, Compress with gzip. So it's pretty simple. Just check the box off, give it a file name, and off you go. So here are the details of the trace file I want to use. It's a 120 megabyte trace file. It's in a Wireshark, I'm going to call it native format, PCAP NG. It's a 200 byte sliced packet. So I'm capturing the first 200 bytes of the packet. There's 69 Ethernet endpoints or MAC addresses, 201 IPv4 addresses. There's 1006 TCP endpoints or ports and 994 UDP endpoints. So this is a good sized trace file. On the Wireshark configuration side, I want it to load as quickly as it, as it could. And there's a lot of, I'm going to say, rumor and legend and myth on how to speed up Wireshark loading a trace file. But one of the ones I want to cover is this one. You disable MAC transport and network resolution. So the MAC addresses don't get resolved to HP, IBM, Cisco, whatnot. Transport doesn't, AD doesn't get resolved to HTTP. And the network name resolution 8.8.8 .8 doesn't get resolved as whatever Google public DNS. So the other thing I did was I enabled show file load time under edit, preferences, appearance, and layout. So that gives me a little thing in the status bar telling me how long it took to load the trace file. So I can simply look at that number every time I load a trace file and I can quickly determine that time. So I basically saved the PCAP trace file using that gzip option. And the first thing I want to compare is how long it took Wireshark to open this gzipped file compared to the native PCAP NG trace file. The way I loaded it was real easy. I double clicked in it from the Windows Explorer window and I recorded that number that I just mentioned in the load time in the status bar. So here we go. You can see all the numbers here. So what do we do? We have five samples. I'm going to drop the high, which are the red ones. I'm going to drop the low, which are the green ones. I'm left with three of them, so I'm going to average those out and there's the average time. So the difference between the two, gzip was 0.5 seconds slower than PCAP NG which for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned, this isn't a deal breaker. It's, you know, it's fine, a half a second, nobody's going to notice that. So I'm going to call it pretty well the same load time. That's good to know. So now we're going to try to compress this using a third party utility. So we're going to compare the original trace file, PCAP NG, 120 megabytes. When we gzip it in, in Wireshark, it goes down to 22 megabytes. So that's pretty cool. Then we use zip from a different utility. And guess what? It's 21. So it's about the same. And lastly, 7Z, another format, went down to 11 megabytes. So the differences between gzip and zip, right? The gzip and zip, they're pretty nominal. I'm going to call them the same. 22 versus 21 meg. That's, that's not a big deal. But what you have to ask yourself is, what are you trying to accomplish, right? If the goal is convenience, right? You don't want to install another package or software 
on your machine or you can't because it's locked down, well then you're probably going to start with Wireshark's G-Zip option and it's well worth it. It's, it gives you plenty of compression to work with, right? But if you want the smallest file possible for whatever reason, or you want to have other options like password protection on a zip file, I think that's incredibly important, then a third party tool is the right one to use. So the one that I used was 7-Zip, but you can use any one you want, but it's something to keep in mind. So I hope that helped you out. Have a good day. Bye for now.